We didn't put on costumes, we put on dreams. Our set pieces were huge. They were yeah. bigger I mean, than The Rock. What was that? I'm Devin Kogan. I'm a senior writer at Entertainment Weekly, and welcome to three rounds with the cast of Black Adam. Cheers, Cheers guys. Come on. Cheers. 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 So I'm so excited to have you guys here, and this is our first round. Dwayne, I wanted to start with you. Yeah. Good. <laughs> there you go. It's good He's stuff. He's got a kick. It's, it's happening. Good. But yeah, Dwayne, I wanted to start with you. This is a character you have wanted to play for the last decade. Tell me about when you finally stepped on the set in the costume, what was going through your head? Um, really? <laughs> <laughs> Already <What's> done. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. really good. <laughs> uh, it's five o'clock, right? It's five o'clock right, somewhere. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll oh, drink boy. to that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm. <laughs> you know, I first stepped on set, it was um, like a real holy sh factor. Cause um, you know, he says it best when he says, uh, we, didn't, we didn't put on costumes, we put on dreams. Yes. And it was truly a dream come true. So I step on set, it hit me like a ton of bricks thinking, wow, there's no reference to Black Adam before this. Um, fortunately, luckily the first one to bring life into this character. No other actors before me. So I step on set. And then within two minutes, I look up and I see the entire JSA in full costume. And again, it hit me like, wow, this is the first time that all of these guys have been on screen for the first time. So it was a real moment of gratitude for me and to see these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for the members of the JSA, tell me a little bit about the first time you guys put on the costume. All this, I love what you said about, you know, you're not putting on a costume, you're putting on a dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, it is a surreal moment. You think about what you're about to take on in terms of the opportunity presented laid down in front of you, what you're gonna represent, who you're gonna represent. The fact that we get to don these superhero costumes is rare air. It yeah. is rare air for, you know, so yeah. as an entertainer, just as an actor, that alone is awesome. As a fan, you're, you're getting to represent, be, you know, sort of the idea, the emblematic uh, encompassing of what you think this person is to you as you read the comics, you get to represent that on screen, awesome. But then again, also, what it means to other kids who look like you. This is where I say, you know, you're putting on the dreams. Spent many years, you know, trying to join this kind of world. Spent many years getting told, no, you can't do this just because of who you are, what you look like, because you're not accepted, you're not valued. And you finally get to a place where you realize all those no's were actually yeses because it, it takes that time to, to mature and graduate and align. Your opportunity takes time to align with the right people with the right mind, and this was the right brother to do it. You know, there are no mistakes. I think him, 10 years trying to push this thing out, right? That was 10 years of constant, consistent work. And had I got any yes prior to that, this wouldn't have been for me. Mm. So I think that it was all relevant because we have a grander goal with the story that we're bringing out, how we're bringing it out. There's a bigger purpose here. And, you know, I can't wait till we realize that October 21st. I'll drink to that. Well, well, well. Cheers to that. Cheers. And yeah, and Pierce, I got to ask about the helmet. Dr. Fate, did you spend a lot of time in the helmet or was that mostly CGI <laughs> or like... It, it was mostly CGI, yeah. I mean, there were two helmets. There was this exquisite helmet, which he carries all the time, that's by his side, that he lives with. And that the aesthetics of that was so, so beautiful. And Jama being so inclusive, he, he asked for my input on how, what the helmet should look like. And I said, it, you know, it should look sleek and elegant. And because he showed me photographs of the first one, it looked like some kind of golden bag or something like this, it just didn't make sense. It was just totally inarticulate. And so there was that helmet and then there was one that I actually physically put on my head. But as soon as you put it on your head, you can't see a darn thing. You know, it's just darkness. <laughs> but, um, and also, you know, Kurt and Bart, through the costumers, the designers, made such beautiful costumes. And for me as, uh, as Kent, uh, my 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 costume is you know the everyday wardrobe that he wears, and that had a certain robustness to it. And then there was my mocap suit, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mocap like suit. Like that. that was my yeah. costume. Sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Sexy. Sexy. Skin Sexy. tight. Oh. <clears throat> we'll drink to that one. Yeah. Oh. That. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Skinny ankles. Aristocratic Irish ankles. <laughs> <laughs> but it was powerful. The first day of working was really powerful. I was so... I was so honored to get this job. I couldn't believe it when you came down the pike. It was the last thing I expected at this time in my life. So thank you so much for putting your trust and faith in me. There's no one there. better to oh. play Dr. Fate truly on this planet and certainly oh. not in our industry. <clears throat> Cheers, mate. You. Thank you, Dwayne. I appreciate it. And that first day of seeing you on the set was just epic, monolithic. You came on, you held the space. And you led us all with such kind of charm and quiet charm and just dignity and humor and grace. And there was no Thank one. Thank you, brother. We, we became a family. We became yeah. a good unit because of you, you know, and your dreams. Thank you. Uh, Thank you Jama. so much. Thank you for saying that. So, what a cast, huh, Devin? Look at this. God. Yeah, I mean, and Quintessa, I'd love to talk to you about, you know, this is the debut of Cyclone, who's this, who's this great character. And I love the way this character moves. And tell us a little bit about sort of like figuring out that physicality of, of playing Cyclone. Yeah, I mean, for me, the physicality for any character is like the most important thing. It's figure out, figuring out like all of these elements that contribute to how this person walks into a space, how they interact with the space and how they embody it. And so for me, that's always been like a little bit shaky for me personally, it's mm. just, deciding to actively take up space rather than, you know, standing in the background and, you know, just letting people, you know, do their thing, but being like, you know, I'm here um, and I have something to contribute. And that's exactly what Cyclone is about. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, we worked on the physical movement and Jama was, you know, incredibly supportive and in giving freedom to craft this character. And Kurt and Bart, you know, everyone had different elements that, built out this character in such a special way. Um, and that costume is a conglomeration of, you know, who she is and what she's proud and like excited about. Um, so there's so many elements, but you know, it was such a joy to play this character, honestly. Yeah, and Noah, this is also the debut of Adam Smasher, who, you know, is sort of new to this, this hero game. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about like, what excited you most about, you know, playing, playing this character? I think the way in is super cool, right? You have a young metahuman who uh, has never seen the field before, but he comes from a family of superheroes, his uncle Al being the original Adam, and his grandfather even, you know, uh, under precarious situation being a villain, um, and a bit of shame in that. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on when you're building the psychological profile of this young metahuman. And he really learns what it means to be a superhero over the course of this film. And, uh, and he really wants to prove himself. And I think we can all identify with that in one way or another. Um, and then just being a part of such a crack cast. Yeah. <laughs> Individuals, man. I mean, just Dwayne having this orchestral project and being able to show up in this ensemble and play an instrument and hopefully just bring that instrument in tune is really the goal with Adam Smasher here and turned out pretty good. I think the whole, the whole film, if I do say so myself, not that I know. I'm you gonna great. drink to him working in precarious into a- Hey, yeah. he did. I mean, that. that was our main brother's- I learned to read support. the other day, bro. I'm proud of you. I'm <laughs> yeah. so proud of you. <laughs> I read sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> I read. <laughs> it's so funny, my I son, oh, sorry, man, my is son. Paris, when he found out that I was working with you, he was just over the moon. You know, my son, he's 21. Uh, he yeah, just yeah. said, you're working with Noah. And then he came God. to Atlanta and, and he, he, was, he Atlanta, got to yeah. work on our he set as well. Movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lovely. The oh. screams in Mexico. <laughs> Noah. For Noah. For Noah. Noah, I love right? you. Yo. <laughs> yeah. Deafening. Noah, it was beautiful, me. yeah. It was, it was so very cool. Fun. I was screaming too. For, yeah. <laughs> we all started screaming. <laughs> We're screaming for each other. We're out of here. Uh, I remember when Q and I first watched the movie about a month ago. Every single time, now you were there too. Yeah. Every single time any of us came on, we were like, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
round two. Oh, cheers, Dan. Cheers. Y'all oh. kept oh, strong. Cheers. All right, cheers, y'all. Cheers. 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 Slanchevar, Slanchevar. 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 It's very Irish, yes. That's nice. Mm. That's good too. Yeah. Go. Oh, so a little tight. Mm. We can't talk about this movie without talking a little bit about some of the stunts and the fight choreography because it is so much fun and there's some like really incredible action set pieces in this. I want to hear from like anybody. What was like the stunt that you were most proud of or like the skill that you learned that you're like mm. really, really hyped about? Come on, Al. Well, you love being up in the air. Come on, Al. Ah, I was most proud that I didn't scream one time <laughs> that they dropped me from 50 feet in the air. <laughs> yeah. The first time up, I'm looking out 50 feet to the ground. I'm hanging up there. I'm rethinking every choice in my life. <laughs> I'm having some real conversations with God at this point. But I see the entire stunt team on the ground, and they live this life. So you can't, you know what I'm saying, like, hey, guys, slow down, wait a minute, get me down, take a minute. No, you got to just, you got to man up. You got to take it. Because your boys are down there, and you know they're going to make fun of you. <laughs> if you do not come through. But uh, no, it, it, I was able to challenge every single fear that I had, especially, I was like, I have all the superheroes. I got to be the one that flies. Lord, no, me and me and Heights, we're not friends like that. But um, we had an amazing, amazing stunt team. Uh, working with our, our fight coordinator, Chris Brewster, who, I mean, is like Taekwondo master. Um, I remember talking to him about uh, Hawkman's movement, and I'd grown up a martial artist, and I had studied a few styles, so I said I wanted Hawkman's movement to really be a culmination of different styles to reflect Hawkman's experience in life as a warrior coming through. And we were able to really sort of play with a few things. And you just have a team that's fully supporting you to be your best self. And that's what I found with every single department on this film. And for me, it was the most amazing sort of, uh, I keep saying this word, but in terms of, it was an evolutionary process for me as a man and as a performer. And uh, there are lessons I take from this that will I'll keep for the rest of my life. Even, you know, I mean, shoot, even to the preparation, I hit... This man up, I was like, hey, bro, I'm not getting the results. I need to get in the gym. I'm doing my push-ups. I text him back, stop texting me, man. Yeah, that's what, that's what he said. He said, he said, get off my line. I'm going to have some boys come down there and hit you up. Stop trying. You'll never get stop that. Stop it. Leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Wait, no, I came to set shape, by the way. Everybody. Thank you, thank you. Al, you were there. Two how months long and before? Like, how? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I got down there. Um, Two, I was two months. Cause got I got there in 96. I, I was in 96. <laughs> the year I was born. 96. <laughs> he was still prepping he went to Atlanta. <laughs> I wasn't not, you wasn't not about to catch me slipping. I had just finished my, my last job. So I was like, all right, it's time to go. Got down there two months and two months early. So it was like a lot of bodybuilding, a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but really working with a, a stunt team of that level, I mean, really it just pushes you to, 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 learn a little bit more and develop a little bit more about your character because to Q's point, movement is so very, very indicative of who that person is. It is so important, you know? So we're all down there. I mean, I remember when Noah got down there, we were in the gym, you know, we're sitting there fighting, doing all this, and we see Q over there, you know, twirling and, yeah. you, know, and you know? And it's like, all right, everybody's going to work. And it's just an awesome thing when you get in the gym early, you know what I'm saying? With the stunt team, you see the other actors in there, and you're like, everybody's taking this serious. All right, we know what this is. Everybody's hitting their highest level, you know? So it was it was really awesome to see. And I've then, been fortunate enough to yeah. you know, be around some, um, some movies where there's a lot of action and a lot of guys who are coming in, and girls who are coming in, um, really putting it down and in shape. But this whole team, they really took it to another level. And the first one I met, before we started shooting was Aldis, and he came in to say hello. I was meeting with our director, John McCollette Sarah, and he walked through the door, and you saw Hawkman walk through that door. Mm. He's a superhero. <laughs> he he wore his little, he had a skinny tank top on when he came in. He was, right. yeah, he was pumped up. I was like, yeah, oh, oh, man, because look at you. I got the extra medium tank top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, he really, yeah. You got to see. But I was proud Shot of him, by the way. Gap. I was, I was. You know, I did 15 push-ups yeah. that day. You know what I'm saying? Right. You just going to see that work. You know what I'm saying? That extra pump, boy, that 15. 
Because a lot of times in these superhero costumes, as we have found out, is a lot of times they afford you, you don't have to be in amazing shape. But this one, all everyone can yeah. it's just really amazing. Did anybody else get to do any like harness work or flying through the air or like what was what was that experience like? Well, for yeah. Black Adam, because Black Adam flies as yeah. well, what Jama did want to do was, and I really appreciate this about Jama, and I feel like this was really a reflection of how we all felt in terms of making a movie that was disruptive and different, and how can we get in and disrupt the superhero genre with all due respect to all the amazing superhero movies before us. Some of the issues that we all had, specifically with Jama, Jama had with flying, is that they're on cables and wires. So there's just this unique tilt that sometimes happens that really bugged him. So he said, if I can create a way to make Black Adam fly, where you're literally like this the whole time, and then you can turn, and as you turn, I'll put you in front of really highly advanced, much smarter than I am, technological LED lights where you could fly through the city. Um, would you be open to that? I said, of course I would. So he was able, I never got on any wires, and I was on this really cool advanced machine that allowed me to lay flat, and that's what you see. And that's why I think for fans, we'll really appreciate the detail and the nuance here of how Black Adam is able to fly with real rage and power and force and never feel like this, but feel like that. Yeah, it's really cool. That is cool, that technology. Yeah, yeah. it's and amazing. Then, what was that Q, machine you were on? The one that, oh, the, the one that lifted the, the, the black, yeah. The, it was like that big black machine. It was like an arm, like a mechanical arm. We were on this machine too that yeah. was made, um, that was created for our movie. And one of the cool things I think about Black Adam is he plays psychological chess with people, so he likes to levitate and float yeah. and make people look up at him, <laughs> which is a cool G move. Like, <laughs> you know, and he looks down at people. So I was on this mechanical arm that everyone here had the unfortunate. <laughs> we look yes. up. We look like up. This is everyone's look up. <laughs> like this. Like Please my whole day. Every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> Okay. Like I'm wearing a helmet that restricts my neck movement. It's chopping off about 30 degrees, oh but it's, it's cool. Um, that LED screen was, oh no, go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. You were talking about, yeah, the, the basically the yeah, whole. Yeah, let's talk about that. That's yeah. cool. The LED screen was this, you know, incredible oh, technology wow. that wrapped around. So when we were on the Hawk yeah. Cruiser, you know, we're in there, and once you're inside of the of the cruiser, when you look out all the windows, you cannot see stage. You ca you cannot it's see anything LED. except for sky and Condoc mm -hmm. in the distance or whatever we're interacting with was there. And it, it really did so much of that, what we would have had to imagine. It was like one big before. Oculus. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying one big VR thing, because when you're yeah. in there, you're fully immersed. All you see is that, and you're like, yeah. I'd like True, your equilibrium off. Too. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And they took they took design from like supercars and sports cars, and yeah. they designed the inside of the Hawk Cruiser and, and the different segments insane. of it. You're in there, and it's, it's just the attention, the detail. It's not like they CGI'd it; they built it they really practically. Did. And that's the with Black Adam, our set pieces were huge. They were. Yeah. Bigger I mean, than the rock. What was that? You know? <laughs> 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 Boom. No, oh, they, they were. They blew me away. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. Q, you were in that. Uh, sort of a machine that allows you to spin and turn, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, oh, thank you, Al. That's so sweet. Uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of, I was curious if it was the same as yours, but mine was like a lollipop rig. So there was someone turning um, like a wheel on one side and the rig just like, a, it floated. So it was like you were already off the ground a little bit, but you can move in any possible direction mm. you wanted. And so when it was like, you know, jumping out of the Hawk Cruiser and she's doing all of this movement, we really were going in every direction possible. And it felt kind of like a, a simulator in a way. Um, but that was like the beauty of it is just like, you know, and also like the prep of like, you know, building something functional in my body to sustain all of that movement and make it as beautiful as Jama wanted. And they did. It's, it's incredible I, to I see. I wasn't on the lollipop rig, but oh, yeah. because my because just kind of floating and levitating was a little different than just flying. Yeah. But to her credit, that lollipop rig, and when people see the movie, and especially after they see this interview, they'll really appreciate her movements. It's just beautiful and fluid that it's hard to do. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. difficult. Yeah. yeah. Gyroscope. But she did it. Yeah. Because you just have to like stare. And then move. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like, all right, yeah. cool. But you out. I mean. It's a trick of not getting dizzy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Spotting. 
No, me, I was just living in that air, living in the sky. In the Atlantic for a few months. heat. I was up there. And the heat. They, and, to, uh, they gave Al a little thing so he could itch. <laughs> Well, yeah. let's, talk, let's talk about that. I, can't, I couldn't get out of my if costume. If you say it like this. First of all, the costumes, you. the costumes are brilliant. They're awesome. Yeah, they're Wonderfully designed. But. Here it comes. There we go. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go to the bathroom <laughs> first without going to your whole costume team. Three, four, five people. Uh, excuse me. I need to handle some personal business. <laughs> but you gotta go at least five minutes early because you need about that much time to get it off and then you run to the bathroom, right? If you were about um, to pop and then you say something, it's too late. I will say for you me, uh, mm -hmm. you know, shout to my costumer, Lori. She's awesome, Lori Harvey. But uh, there's a bit of, uh, of uh, an ego check when you're, you know, you as a grown man gotta go, excuse me, mm -hmm. miss, mm -hmm. help a brother out. Unzip my pants. Yeah. I, I need to get all this off so I can go. You know what I mean? Um, I thought those days were over, but no, nah, no, nah, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? I humbled myself. Uh, you learned what a lot. What was weird was when Al was asking me to help him out of here. That's, That's what I said. Yeah. It's even weirder when you did yeah. it. That's what it's like. Oh, no. It's even weirder when we watched. Hey. <laughs> It's on YouTube somewhere. No, I would do it again. Oh. I would do it again. That was a test. You failed. No, my you failed. brother. I thought not I was helping you. It's just, just the doing. liquor talking. Wow. I'm just saying, on that note, I think we got we to gotta go to round three. Round three. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. So welcome back to round three. We're drinking a Paloma, and I want to point out that we've been drinking tequila-based drinks all right. night, and they are made with Terramana tequila. Thank you very much. Shout Thank out you. to Terramana. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Cheers to Black Adam. Here's the Black Adam. That's what I'm talking about. That's my guy. That's my guy. <laughs> Adam Smasher smashes everything, including drinks <laughs> in two seconds. <laughs> including drinks. Oh my God. Absolutely. Who did it? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh Every, everything, though. Everything. <laughs> you name it, I'll smash it. Bro, we, we just that right? started. That's funny you say that. Pierce hasn't even had a sip. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I would love to talk a little bit about, oh you know, Dwayne, you're no stranger yeah. to like this kind of like big blockbuster, major kind of movie. What felt different about making Black Adam? Well, when I made Baywatch. You in the house. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him. Tell him. Finish. Tell him yeah. about yeah. it. Finish well, the story. Kevin set it. me up so nicely about it. It's a big blockbuster. Um, the opportunity that we had, the opportunity that we had to deliver something that had never been delivered to the big screen before, not only never been delivered to the big screen before and, and um, opening up and expanding the DC universe with characters, five superhero characters that have never been seen before, never played before, except now. So it was the opportunity that made this feel different, but also in a beloved genre of superhero the superhero genre, supervillain genre, but also part of the DC pantheon, which has been beloved over the decades and decades. So uh, every, around every corner, everything was different, everything was unique, and everything just had, a, honestly, a different vibe and a mana to it that was so um, really intoxicating and motivating and inspiring. Yeah, I mean, what about you, Pierce? You, you know, again, you're no stranger to you know, big right. roles and big franchises. What, what felt different about making Black Adam? It was the intoxication, I think. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> intoxication. But I, what was different, I mean, having done the Bond movies, made four Bond movies, this was really head and shoulders. It was so epic, so big. But it was so beautiful to be, it just felt so comfortable making the movie. There was no real anxiety. I mean, Jama and yourself, Dwayne, and everyone sitting at the table, it was such a delight to go to work every day and watch this movie unfold before you. I mean, you read the text and you think, how are they going to do that? And then you go to the studio every day and it would be magical. To, you know, the first day of work was, you know, you Aldis coming in as Hawkman with the two guys under your arms. Dwayne was there. Yeah looking monolithic and the presence of you was so powerful. And then Jama just uh, taking care of us all. You felt, yeah. uh, you felt you were in safe hands. And um, 
I remember Thomas said to me, you know, he said, where, where, do, where, do you, where are you going to be in this scene? Again, it's the scene where Hawkman comes in with the two guys and I said, I'm just going to sit in this chair over here, yeah. okay? <laughs> So I sat in the chair and I watched everyone work. <laughs> and they slingshot me back and forth yeah. 25 times. I, may I say something, uh, Pearson? You may say anything you wish at this point in the proceedings. <laughs> it's okay, brother. Go ahead. I'm bulletproof. <laughs> Just, I, I want to acknowledge something he said I think is very important about Jalma. I think he comes from a... Um, he comes from a, a group of Spanish filmmakers, a cadre of Spanish filmmakers who are so talented uh, and have led a generation of filmmakers in our, in our industry. But it tr truly starts with him. And I I'm so happy and uh, quite proud to hear that everyone had such a great experience because it's not always like that. Especially mm -hmm. when we get an yeah. ensemble and a group together and yeah. there's a lot of people to come together for the first time. As, yeah. as everyone knows, it's tough and it's not always like that, but this, was so serene and so it peaceful was. and so easy yeah. and so monofield, which is such a uh, convergence of what's on the page because it's Black Adam and it's the JSA. So I really want to give it up for Jama. I mean, That's he really yeah. created that environment. Yes. Jama. Okay. Yeah, to Jama. Oh. Jama Collect Jama. Sarah. Yes. Really? Cheers. Mm. Um, well, I want to, we're coming to the end of our conversation, but real quick, I want to throw it out to anybody. What was the day on set or the scene that you guys shot that when you think back to this filming process sticks out in your mind the most? I, I personally loved when it was everyone together in the hot cruiser for the first time. And yeah, whenever was we had a yeah. week of that. Yes. Seeing everybody show up and just <clears throat> the ensemble, I guess, was mentioned before the orchestra started to play. And um, mm -hmm. you saw Lauren share behind yes. the camera, setting everything, the dynamic movements, the colors in the hot cruiser. It's our DP. My uh -huh. DP, yeah. And uh, Jama, of course, just uh, empowering every single one of us to take control of our character and, and giving us the how we felt the priority, but also somehow managing to just put us all together so that we could mm -hmm. harmonize properly. Yeah, that was for me, I think, my favorite, like the moment that mm -hmm. sticks with me and will forever stick with me. Love it. Yeah. I think yeah. for me, the day is, well, I don't give away spoilers, but there's a day like in the, I guess, the town square or whatever, mm -hmm. where we're all sitting there <clears throat> on the ground and we're standing in our suits. <clears throat> it was like, <laughs> that's literally how we were. We're like, yeah. You know, I mean, everybody was together, and then you kind of see it, and then that's when, you know, it the magic is already there, but that's when it really, you know, it becomes real again for mm -hmm. you because you're reminded, you're mm -hmm. taken out of the the moment of performance, and and of course focusing on the job for a minute, and you're kind of set back to just sit there and marvel at what's around you. Yeah, and again, I mean, our stages were I don't know what twenty thousand square feet or something like Huge. that. They build an entire city in there, and you're really immersed in it. But then you see everybody else, you're like, oh, this is awesome. This is real. This is what we're doing, you know? And I'm just saying, it's, you can, sometimes you have to see it to believe it. We already had grand belief, but when we see it, it just reinforces it and, and to a place where the belief is infinite. So regardless mm -hmm. of what happens beyond this point, you know you are making magic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, this has been uh, three rounds with Entertainment Weekly and with the cast of Black Adam. Thank you guys so much for joining me and cheers. Let's Thank all you. Congratulations. Cheers.